Good afternoon, Elevate, and welcome to the online youth service. Come on, wherever you are right now, let's worship our wonderful, wonderful God. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. Satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Turn seas into highways. The 
Is that 
no one greater but you alone Lord Jesus in every area of our life in every circumstance we know that you are there you are our security you are our confidence Lord Jesus no other name but the name of Jesus. No? And guys, again, I just want to invite everyone to join us um, every week. No, uh, We have Time Out Thursdays happening every Thursday, 8pm. No? Uh, this is ginagawa natin to to receive our weekly dose of encouragement and of course, if you want to be prayed for, uh, you can join with us every Thursday. And as well as this coming Friday, February 26, we have our very own special guest, no? Kuya Archie and uh, his wife, and together with Stephen and Ate Naiji. Ayan. So pag-uusapan natin dito about uh, kung ready na ba talaga tayo to enter into a relationship. And of course, um, meron din tayong weekly and daily hangouts. Ayan. So, ano yung mga daily hangouts natin na yun? Ayan. So, every Wednesday, we have... Ayan. So, every Wednesday, we have 5 to 6 p.m. General High School and 5 to 7 p.m. Elevate Kalentong for those na students who are in Mandaluyong area. And, of course, every Friday, uh, meron din tayo sa Anonas, for high school students and uh, uh, 3 to 5 p.m. and after that 5 to 7 p.m. for college students and also meron din tayo sa life academy na 5 to 6 30 and of course um, elevate or sa the hubs or tigas yeah for college students or high school you can join them 
And every Saturday, 3 to 5 p.m., Elevate Ortigas High School and Colleges. And Elevate Pasig, 4 to 6 p.m. after this youth service. And of course, 6.30 to 9 p.m., the neighborhood. And guys, if you need someone to talk to, uh, let me invite you to have a conversation with us. So just chat with us in our Elevate main Facebook page. And our Ates and Kuyas would be glad to have conversations with you and to pray for you. But before we move on to our um, topic this afternoon, let us pray with our pastor and with our speaker. Lord, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time you have given to us, Lord God. Thank you so much for those people who are watching with us right now. And Father God, I pray na kung mapanood man nila to live or replay, Lord, may you continue to change our hearts. May you continue, Father God, to meet us, Lord God, wherever we are right now. Father, we lift you up, our speaker, Pastor Marty. May you override his preparations, Father God. May you teach him what to say and what not to say. And may you use his words mightily, Father God, to, um, for us to hear your message. Father God, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ayon. Am I there? There you go. So thank you, Albert. That's one of our campus missionaries. Good afternoon. Good day to everyone. Uh, I'm back. I thank you guys for praying for me and my family. Uh, my wife just gave birth uh, last week. So we have a new addition to our family. But before I show the picture of the new addition, I just want to greet everyone. Happy Valentine's. Uh, belated, okay, I know it was late already, but I hope you had a wonderful uh, Valentine's week. And of course, we are still in this love month. So let me show you the new addition to our family. This is baby Samuel. Okay, so that's a new addition to our growing family. I really praise God for the strength he has given to my wife, of course, and to us as well. And to you guys who have been praying for us, thank you so much for praying. Uh, it was, uh, I think this was the toughest for my wife, but praise God, he helped my wife uh, bring out this wonderful baby. So baby Samuel. So we're continuing our series, and again, this is the love month, and uh, our series is entitled Add to Heart. And the reason why we want this to become, you know, this, this, this is our topic, and we have different topics we talked about last week, uh, about labels, why it's very important to put labels and to make it clear right in the world that in the world that there's so many un unclear things right it's very important to put clarity in certain things so as we continue this series the reason why we have this is because our desire so look at this our desire is for each one of you to avoid unnecessary pain when it comes to romantic relationships right so we want to, you to avoid unnecessary pain wait lang kuya marty so you mean to say there's such a thing as necessary pain definitely there's such a thing as necessary pain meaning to say god will allow us to experience pain in certain areas when it comes to romantic relationship for us to learn and grow but the thing is there are unnecessary pain that we could have avo avoided. For example, unnecessary delays. Sometimes because we entered in a wrong relationship, we have unnecessary delays, right? Or sometimes because we entered a, a wrong relationship or a not, not right in a, not in a right way, we have unnecessary tensions. We have unnecessary conflicts. And we want you guys, especially you guys who are still single, our young people still studying in high school, college, or even if you've graduated already, but you know it's not yet the right time or that person is not the right person, we want you to avoid unnecessary pain, okay? So can you tag your friends there? Sabihin mo nga sa friends mo, Uy, ayokong masaktan ka. Okay, so I don't want you guys to get hurt. I don't want you to, yung unnecessary, of course there is what, what we call unnecess, uh, necessary pain, but we don't want you to experience that. That's why we have this series. Because the truth about all of us is this. We add to our heart, when, when I say add to our heart, we, uh, we enter into a romantic relationship uh, or we try to pursue a girl or we try to, you know, get to know this guy or whatever that is. We add to our heart even if we are not sure. Why do we do that? 
Natanong mo naman sa sarili mo, bakit mo ba ginagawa yun? Why do you add to your heart even though you're not sure? Why do you add to your heart even though you are not secure? You, personally, you're not, in, you're, in, you're not secure. You're insecure. Why, why do you do that? Why do you add to your heart even though you're not ready? Have you ever asked that question? Because that's a very important question to ask. Living in a world right now where young people, high school and college students, they just want to enter a relationship left and right. They don't care what the world says. In fact, if you, read, if you watch vloggers today, the popular vloggers, there are a lot of vloggers that would tell you, just enter. Look at us. Look at our relationship. We're living in, in this house. We're not married, but we're happy. And those are all lies. They may be happy externally, but that's not secure. It's not secure. And that's why we want you to avoid unnecessary pain. Because a lot of people nowadays, they enter into a relationship. They add to their heart even if they're not sure, even if they're not secure, and even if they're not ready. Why do you do that? For some people, look at their reasons. Some of them would say, I want to be happy, Guya Marty. Diba? We live in a world like that. I just, I just want to be happy. Can you just let me be? I, I, I want to be happy. And this guy makes me happy. Or this girl makes me happy. So let me just be happy. Hollywood would say that. Sometimes even K-drama would say that. I'm watching a, a K-drama recently. And the, the, the story revolves around this person desiring to be happy. I love my life. I want to be happy. That's what this person is saying. For some people, their excuse is, I deserve it. You have to understand my past, Kuya Marty. I've been hurt many times. My parents weren't there for me. My parents are separated. I don't feel love. And then there's this guy who expresses concern, spends time with me, chats me every day until maybe 2 a.m. Nobody has ever given me that attention. Oh, guilty. Sinong ganon? But you get what I'm talking about? Some people, they say that. I deserve it. I haven't experienced this. Ngayon lang to, nung high school, walang may crush sa akin. Ngayon, ang daming may crush. Kuya Mars, magbigyan mo na ako. I deserve it. Some people, that's what they say. For some people, they say, others are happy. Why shouldn't I be happy, right? If there are people who doesn't love the Lord, they're happy. I want to experience that. And I think having a relationship will allow me to experience that. And again, that's a misconception that I want to deal with as we go on with our topic today. For some people, this is what they say. I want to take a risk for the sake of my happiness. Again, it revolves around happiness. I know what you're saying, Kuya Mars. I know na I'm not yet ready or I'm not sure if this is going to lead to marriage. Pero masaya kami dito eh. <laughs> May mga ganun eh. Masaya to eh. Masaya to ngayon. So why would I let it go? Why would I stop it? Even if I'm not sure, if I'm, even if I'm not secure, even if I'm not ready, why would I stop it? I'm gonna take a risk. Baka mag-work. Diba? May mga ganun. Baka mag-work. Tama ba, Osep? So, may mga tao nandito. Ha? Hindi lang ako mag-isa dito. Ha? So, may mga ganun. Hindi na magtuturo ng iba, okay? Kasi wala man ang pinaparinggan. But anyway, I believe, or another reason is, I believe this is going to work, right? Yung determination. Okay, March, you're, you're getting me wrong. I know na hindi pa time. That maybe God is saying that, but I can make this work. Kaya ko to, bahala. I can balance it. I know what to do. Even if my parents say no. Even if I'm not yet ready. Even if I don't know if this is going to lead to marriage. I'm going to make this work. Right? And for some people, the reason is this. I've gotten hurt many times. Just like this. I deserve it. Nasaktan na ako ilang beses. So please, just let me be. Now, you may have all of those reasons or maybe none of these, but maybe you have your own reasons that even if you're not sure, even if you're not secure, even if you're not ready, you want to enter in a, ro a romantic relationship. And uh, here I am to tell you, it's going to be problematic. You know why? These statements centered on the word happiness. We live in the world that people, all, maybe majority, are looking for happiness in the wrong place. Or they're placing their happiness in the wrong foundation. Why is that very problematic? And some people would say this, how can something that makes me happy become wrong? Bakit mali ang nagpapasaya sa akin, di ba? And some people, that's what you would 
tell your friends, your D-group mates, maybe your parents, maybe your loved ones who is against your relationship, telling you, Hoy, wag mo na, bata ka pa. How can something that makes me happy become wrong? Look at this chart. Happiness in the wrong foundation equals disaster. Have you ever experienced disaster in your life? For example, maybe if you live in the Marikina area and then it got flooded because of Undoy or recently last year when it got flooded, that's a disaster. What's the feeling when you experience a disaster? When you experience a disaster, it's uncomfortable. There's no peace. There's that uncertainty now, what's going to happen? I don't know. There's the devastating feeling. Why are we experiencing this? That's what happens when someone places their happiness in the wrong foundation. What are wrong foundations? If your happiness is in that person, that guy or that girl, that's a wrong foundation. If your happiness is in the relationship, that's a wrong foundation. If your happiness is in money, that's a wrong foundation. If your happiness is in marriage, is having kids, or being successful in life, those things are wrong foundations. Wait a minute, Kuya Marty. Parang lahat yun, yun ang foundations ng majority of the people in this world. Kaya nga, ang daming problematic sa world na to eh. Because their happiness is in the wrong foundation. Definitely, it's gonna be a disaster. And the problem natin ito, even if we know this, as long as we don't change the foundation, uulit ang uulit yan. Kaya maraming tao matigas ang ulo eh. <laughs> Di ba? Maraming tao matigas ang ulo. Bakit? Kasi yung happiness sila nasa wrong foundation. So even if it change mo yung happiness mo, let's say I'm gonna be happy because of this, pero wrong pa rin yung foundation, it will end up in a disaster until we change the foundation. That's the only time the equation will change. So if happiness is in the right foundation, then definitely there's gonna be certainty. It's not just blessing. It's not just gonna give you happiness because here's the thing. This one, I tell you, it's gonna give you happiness temporarily. It's going to be, give you happiness maybe for a season. But then when the going gets tough, when you realize that your foundation is not secure, then boom, there's disaster. But when your happiness is in the right foundation, I tell you, in the long run and for the rest of your life, there is certainty. Alam mo yung gusto natin lahat? All of us, ha, here's what I know. All of us gusto natin ng certainty. Yung sigurado ka. Yung you know that this person will be for, your, for the rest of your life. You're gonna marry this person. When you know that this person will not cheat on you, di ba gusto mo na certainty? Will not deceive you, will not, will not manipulate you, will be faithful to you, certainty. But that only happens when your happiness is in the right foundation. That's why our message for today, but before I say that, let's look at this thing first. One of the major problems of putting happiness in the wrong foundation is we tend to make the wrong things right. Yan. Magaling tayo sa ganun eh. Alam mo nang mali, gagawin mong tama. Bakit? Because we put our happiness in the wrong foundation. Tinatwist mo eh, right? We, we tend to do that. That's why our message today is this. In any romantic relationship, the Secure in the Lord. Can you type that there? Type mo nga dyan sa type box sa YouTube and sa Facebook page natin. Just say to your friends, in any romantic relationship, if you are in a romantic relationship, make sure that your security is in the Lord. Your foundation is in the Lord. If you are trying to pursue a relationship, make sure that your security is in the Lord. If you're in the waiting stage, when, uh, na, na, alam ko majority of the people right now listening, you're in the waiting stage right now. You're still waiting. You're still studying. Make sure that your security is in the Lord. When your security is in the Lord, like what I said earlier, it means that your foundation is the Lord. It means that hindi ka nagahanap or hindi ka worried kung single ka. It means that kahit na single ka and majority of your friends are having a relationship, it's totally okay. You're not gonna use your past to make an excuse to enter a relationship. You're not gonna uh, make your, your, your situation right now, how difficult it may be, as an excuse to enter a relationship. Why? Because your security is in the Lord. So what's our message? In any romantic relationship, what? Be secure in the Lord. What, what does that mean? Look at this. Here's my definition of security in the Lord. Security in the Lord means that I trust His will. So I trust His will. 
And if I truly trust His will, I'm going to seek His guidance in every aspect of my life. So when it comes to love life, I trust Him, okay, I shouldn't pursue any girl who doesn't love the Lord. I'm not going to say yes to a guy who doesn't love the Lord. I'm not going to do sexual immorality. I mean, all those things. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to deceive. I'm not going to man- manipulate. I'm not going to enter a relationship basta dahil gusto ko lang. I'm going to seek His guidance. Yan lang ibig sabihin na trust His will. So when my security is in the Lord, I trust His will and I seek His guidance in every aspect of my life. Ang problem kasi natin is we Say we trust His will, but we don't seek His guidance. Or maybe we seek His guidance, but we don't follow Him. We don't obey. Alam na natin yung clear path. Pinapakita na ni Lord step by step. But we don't go to that path. We go to our own route. And that's disastrous. It just says that our security is not in the Lord, but in the relationship. That's why when your, your security or my security is in the Lord, I trust His will and I seek his guidance. Look at this passage. Okay, let's read Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. What it means when your security is in the Lord. God is our refuge, security, foundation, strength, an ever-present help in trouble. What's the result if your security is in the Lord? When you trust Him, seek His guidance, you follow Him, the result is this. Therefore, we will not fear. Gusto ba ng ganong life? You're not afraid that even if you're still single and other people are getting married, you're okay. That even if yung crush mo, may crush na na iba, or ayaw ka na, or may ibang gusto, okay lang. You may get hurt, but you're not devastated. That's what it means when you will not fear. Because yung security mo, naka-angkla, naka-angkor kay Lord, hindi dun sa tao, hindi dun sa relationship. Do you get this? I hope this is getting into your heads and in your hearts. That you're realizing that sometimes our tendency is, yes, we say our security is in the Lord, pero sobrang nakahawa ka doon sa tao eh. Doon sa relationship eh. And it doesn't mean that you don't get hurt pag yung tao na yun, iloko ka or something like that. It's okay to get hurt, but it's easy to let go. You're not devastated. You're not afraid. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall. Look at the description of this psalmist. He's saying even if the things in this world is crumbling apart because my foundation is the Lord, I'm totally secure. The heart of the seas, even if this is happening, it's totally okay. Look at this passage where we're going to focus at. Psalm 15. Ang ganda ng passage na yan, guys. Read it. Meditate on it. We're gonna study this in a while. But look at the last part of verse 5. Whoever does these things, I'm gonna explain what these things are, uh, will never be shaken. Oh, gusto pa na ganun klase life na I'm not gonna be shaken. Lokohin ako, I'm not gonna be shaken. May ibang gusto, mabasted ako, I'm not gonna be shaken. Matibay ito, right? Can you honestly say, matibay ka? <laughs> diba? Matibay ito. Bakit? Kasi yung tibay ko na kay Lord. You know, a lot of people, yung tibay nila wala kay Lord. They easily get swayed. They easily get deceived. They easily get, uh, get hurt with other things. Why? Because they compare. They look at other things. Their eyes are fixed on the things in this world. They don't look to Jesus constantly. Ah. They don't look to Jesus constantly depending on Him because whenever we do these things, what are these things? Later, I'm going to show to you. You will not be shaken. We need to have a strong heart in a world where it makes our hearts weaker. Do you see that? The world tries to make our hearts weaker. Why? It gives us other options, other foundations apart from God, which will never be fully secure. If you want to be not shaken, kay Lord lang talaga yun. Kaya nga, what's our message? In every romantic relationship, be what? Secure in the Lord. So let me explain that. Let me explain what this means. When you say you are secure in the Lord, ano yung quality ng life mo? How does that show physically? What's gonna happen in the way you relate with people? What's gonna happen when you try to pursue a romantic relationship? What's gonna happen when you try to wait? What's gonna happen when you try to interact with the opposite sex? What does that mean when you are secure in the Lord? Are you ready? 
So if you're ready, let's look at this and let's study Psalm chapter 15. Let's look at verse 1. Five verses lang to, pero so powerful. Tami natin mga dito. Verse 1, the psalmist says, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent, who may live on your holy mountain? Because the psalmist is saying that if you stay in the presence of God, there's absolute security. That's what he's saying. So who may stay in your tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? So sino yung qualified to do that? Who is qualified to not be shaken? What kind of act? What kind of life? Look at what he says. Verse 2. The one whose walk is blameless. Ibig sabihin ba kung Marty, perfect? No. The word blameless here, it means that you are right. You are whole. Meaning to say there's integrity. Meaning to say you are a righteous person. You are consistent at home and outside following the Lord. You're blameless. It doesn't mean you're perfect. But you're whole. Who does what is righteous? The word righteous here is in the standard of God. Righteousness in God's eyes. Kasi pwedeng sa mata ko righteous ka, pero kay God hindi ka righteous. Righteousness in the standards of God. So when my life is blameless, righteous, it means I'm not going to be shaken. That's one part of it. Who speaks the truth from their heart. Focus mo tayo dito sa dalawa. Number one, when I say that my security is in the Lord, I desire to please God. I want to start with that point. Because the other points will be impossible if your desire is not to please God. Ang dami kong kilalang ganun. Now, you grew up in church, you attend Sunday school, you attend Elevate, you attend a Sunday service, but your heart doesn't desire to please God. Your desire is to please yourself. Your desire is to, you know, you know, to please the lust of your flesh. And when that's your desire, the other things will be difficult. But if your desire is to please God, kasi yan ang ibig sabihin ng blameless and righteous. Yung puso mo, talaga ang desire is to please God. It starts with that. In fact, that's the main part of this message that we need to focus on. The other things, automatic na yun when I desire to please God. If my desire is to please God, mas madali na iba. Because it starts in the heart. I've asked one of our musicians who played earlier to share his testimony of how, you know, so, so many things happened in his life entered in many relationships, tried to please his own flesh, but eventually he realized it was empty, and eventually he learned his lesson, and eventually he encountered the Lord. I mean, this person grew up in church. Uh, this person grew up in church, pero wala yung desire to please God. But somehow, that all changed. So let's all welcome Mr. Renzo. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I grew up in a Christian environment and I was heavily influenced by my family and the Christians around me. I attended Sunday school and also got exposed to the youth ministry at a young age. I served in various ministries and was active especially in the music ministry. As a pastor's kid, my parents raised me with godly values and principles. However, I wasn't able to live these out because I did not have a relationship with Jesus. Being in the ministry and hearing many testimonies instilled a longing in, my, in, in me to explore worldly things. At the age of 15, 14, I started using and selling marijuana and was into cocaine and other drugs. I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day I often went to, to parties and got drunk, and I was engaged in sexual immorality. I influenced my Christian friends and relatives into doing vices, despite actively serving in the ministry. I was living a double life, showing people an image that I was a godly and faithful servant of the Lord. The reason I was still active in the ministry was because of the pressure I had in maintaining a pastor's kid image. And also, my underlying intentions of flirting with women. It's commonly known in our church as Evangeligo and Disciple Chicks. Uh, having these intentions gave me the desire to constantly be in relationships and flings. I entered into my first official relationship at the age of 15 and still had multiple sexual relationships with other women. 
<laughs> I had an excessive desire for being in relationships, but I was never satisfied with any of them. While searching for satisfaction in these, I yearned for, for fulfillment in one, of rela one relationship instead of many. Dating became my life. I never felt complete unless I was with a girl that I wanted to be with. I unknowingly placed my security in all these relationships. Whenever things didn't go my way, I felt like it was the end of my life. Because of this, I eventually felt so lost. I couldn't stand the thought of not being with a person that I liked. And I was always willing to, to risk everything just to get here. I became obsessed with the thought of relationships. There was a void in my heart and I wanted to fill it with real love and contentment. No matter how I tried, that void could not be filled. All my relationships got worse to the point where they affected the people around me, especially my family. Conflicts and issues followed me everywhere. In every church satellite that I went to and served at, I was branded from a pastor's kid to the guy who had a girl in every satellite. <laughs> my double life was still blind. My double life was exposed, but it wasn't enough to open my eyes. I was still blinded and took it against the church and the Lord and labeled them as condemning people. Soon after, the consequences of my sinful life caught up to me when my sexual relationships with church members were consecutively exposed. It felt as if I wanted to vanish or kill myself because of the shame that I have brought upon my family and myself. The pastor's kid image was gone and I altogether stopped serving and distanced myself from the, Lord, from the church, from my family, and to the Lord. Despite my sinfulness, God used my family to pursue and love me unconditionally, which finally made me see the love that I was looking for so desperately. In the, in, in the chaos, both my immediate and church family reached out, reached out to me and walked with me consistently. When I was in multiple relationships, that's when I felt the most alone. However, when I had nowhere to turn to, that's when I found the comfort of love himself. That's when I knew that my security should be found in him. I was compelled to surrender all my vices and ungodly relationships to the Lord. God replaced my, my romantic relationships with real love from my family, accountability partners, and discipleship group. The love that I felt from these people led me to see the love of Christ and prioritize my relationship with Jesus. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up to me, for me. By God's grace, I am now living a life that is pleasing to the Lord, holding on not to the things of this world, but His promises. My security is no longer in, in relationships, but in Jesus. In my current season, I do my best in Christ to not act upon my emotions. Because I am deeply rooted in the love of Christ, I am not rushing to be in a relationship. Being secure in Christ doesn't mean that it's wrong to like and pray for someone. I encourage you all not to act in your emotions, but to pursue the person you like in the best way possible, which is to pray for them. My greatest weapon besides Jesus is prayer and transparency to my accountability partners. He is indeed the God who restores relationships, heals broken hearts, redeems lost souls, fulfills promises, secures our identity, satisfies our whole being, and loves us overflowingly. He is true love. Let me close with this verse. And in him you have been made complete. 
and he is the head over every ruler and authority. Colossians 2 verse 10. I am Renzo Urquico, completely satisfied, secured, and madly in love with Jesus Christ. To God be all the glory. Thanks, brother. You see that in that story that uh, even he, he grew up in church. He was a pastor's kid. But the desire wasn't to please God. And of course, he experienced those unnecessary pain. And sometimes those, and I believe those unnecessary pain can wake us up. And by God's grace, that lead him to repentance, to turn away, and to pursue God. But I'm not saying that kailangan mo yung unnecessary pain. Some of you, you haven't experienced that pain. Wag mo nang gusto yung may experience yun. Testimonies are not here for you to, to follow their examples, yung past examples nila, but to learn that you can avoid those things from happening in your life. So it starts first with a desire to please God. He learned that. Renzo learned that. That I need to place my security in the Lord, not in the relationships. And look at what, the, what this passage says in Psalm chapter 1. Verse 1, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, meaning to say your friends are not following Jesus, they're not loving the Lord, and they are not drawing you close to God. Don't associate yourselves with them. I'm not saying that don't talk to them, but don't live the kind of life that they're living. Instead, your delight, my delight, should be in the law of the Lord, in His Word, in the Bible, in spending time with Him. Why? Because if our delight is in the law of the Lord and meditate on His law day and night, then that kind of person, you or me, you're like a tree planted by streams of water, meaning to say the tree is beside the stream of water which is absolutely secure for the tree, which yields its fruit in season. Why? There's nutrients coming from the water and whose leaf does not wither whatever they do prosper. Just like Psalm 15 uh, verse 5, you will not be shaken when your foundation is in the Lord. Whatever you do prospers. I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire. I'm not saying that. But you're going to be secure. That's why, first part, if you want to be secure, if you say you are, your security is in the Lord, then my desire should be to please God. What's our message in any romantic relationship? Ano daw? Be secure in the Lord. So what's number two? So it means number one, my desire is to please God. It starts with that one. And my prayer is if that's not your desire, you ask God tonight. Lord, change my heart. Because my desire, medyo taliwas eh. Medyo my desire is to please other people, myself, my lust. Please change it over, haul it completely, because it starts with that one. If your desire is to please God, what's the result of that? What's the next part? Look at verse 2. The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is right, who speaks the truth from their heart. Oh, Kuya Marty, dapat pala umami na ako. Hindi yan ang ibig sabihin ng passage na yan, Okay, hindi ibig sabihin, no? Eh, yun yung nasa heart ko, kaya mo, speak the truth. Here's the meaning of that. Speak what is right. Ano ibig sabihin na speak what is right? When you see the word truth, it is based on God's truth. Meaning to say, there's a truth in your heart and a truth in a specific situation. Know the truth in every situation that you are in. For example, in this kind of relationship that you're trying to pursue or this girl that you like, what is the truth? Truth about your heart, meaning to say, do you really love the person? Or wala ka talaga plano pakasalan? Yan. Do you really like the person or you just like the company? Oh, may mga nag-react dito, guys. So, whoa, easy. Easy lang. Okay? So, truth about your heart. You need to be honest. You need to evaluate it. Hindi lang yung nagustuhan ko, yun na. You need to evaluate. Pinag-iisipan ko ano yung nasa puso, guys. Pinag-iisipan yun. Hindi lang yan. Basta na feel na, yun na. You have to process. You have to think. Why? Because it's commitment. Kaya maraming nasisira eh. Kasi hindi commitment. They don't think about it. They don't process it. They just feel it. What if you don't feel it anymore? Wala na, right? You need to process it. So think about the truth about your heart and then the truth about what is right. So now that you, let's say you, you thought about it, you prayed about it, you talked to God and, and it has revealed in your heart na, so talaga to, I want to marry this person. In that situation, you're not yet ready to get married because you're 14 years old. 
So what's the truth about the situation? Awag mo na. Diba yun the truth? The truth is I'm not gonna court. I'm not gonna go court this girl. Or if you're the girl and there's this guy courting, you're not gonna say yes. You're 15 years old. You know you need to study. You know that you're still young. You know that ne- next year you're not gonna get married yet, right? It's gonna be take a long time. And here's the thing, huh? ito advice ko lang why we, we don't encourage long relationships that you're in high school. The longer the relationship is without commitment, the harder it gets. The longer the relationship is without commitment, ah, eh, Kuya Marty, committed kami, boyfriend and girlfriend, committed in the eyes of God. And that only happens in marriage. Let me repeat that. Committed in the eyes of God. And that, biblically, only happens in marriage. If there's no marriage, that's not commitment in the eyes of God. So, ni boyfriend and girlfriend, process lang yon. It's not commitment in the eyes of God. The longer it takes for you to get married, the harder it gets. That's why boyfriend and girlfriend relationship in high school, college, ang daming nangyayaring roller coaster sa situation nila, sa relationship nila. Ups and downs, ups and downs, hurting one another, unnecessary pain, unnecessary delays, ang daling magselos, sobrang daming insecurities, girls and even boys. Why? Because there's no commitment in the eyes of God. That's why, what's the truth in that, that situation? You have to think about it. There's truth here. So if that's the truth, speak what is right. I'm not yet ready to be in a relationship. I cannot entertain your courtship yet. That's the truth. What's the truth as a guy? I'm not going to court anyone yet because this is not what God wants. That's the truth. I may like the person, you may like the person, pero I only Lord for you because the person doesn't love the Lord. Then, I'm not going to entertain this relationship. I'm not going to pursue that girl. That's the truth. You see, it's based on God's truth, not just on what you think is true in your heart. Sometimes, yun ang problema natin, we always base the truth on our feelings, on what we think is right. Na ito yung truth eh. You have to understand there's absolute truth, there's the God of truth, and He knows what is true. Be secure in the Lord. Verse 3. So first is, what's the first one? Desires to please God. So if my desire is to please God, and sinabi niya ito yung totoo, so I will speak what is right in this situation. That's number two. Number three is this. Whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor, and casts no slur on others, or dishonoring other people, hurting other people, who despises a vile person or evil person, but honors those who fear the Lord. Alam mo, sometimes nakakalungkot ah, even if we're already followers of Jesus, we have fun with people who doesn't love God. Nakakalungkot yung ganun ah. When you say have fun, when they're sinning against the Lord, natutuwa pa tayo. Parang mali yun, isabi dito, despise a vile person. Evil na nga yung ginagawa, natutuwa ka pa. Tapos minsan, ang problem pa sa atin, we dishonor, we don't honor those who fear the Lord. Yung mga KJ, if you feel kill joy na, ano ba to? Talagang no boyfriend since birth. Grabe ka naman. Shadow ka naman serious kay Lord. May ba may mga ganun tao na honor mo yun? Kasi that person is committed to God. That girl is committed to the Lord. I like this preacher. Sabi ng preacher, in prayer niya sa kids niya. Sabi niya, my prayer for my kids is that they would have boring testimonies. Alam mo, nagusto ako yung line na yun. Para na pa-change din yung prayer ko. Sabi ko, Lord, oo nga. Lord, I pray that my kids will have boring testimonies. Bakit? Ano yung boring? Yung wala kang masabi na, hindi ako nag-immorality, hindi ko ginawa yung drugs, hindi ko ginawa ito. Gusto ko sana ganun yung kids ko when they grow up. Why? Because it means that they will not have to experience unnecessary pain. And that's what I like about, uh, for you guys. That's what I like for you guys. That you will have boring testimonies. If you're in your teenage years, 14, 15 years old, I pray that you will have boring testimonies. That when you get married, you're in the altar na. Wala ka masasabi na, alam mo, ito talaga yung guy for me. Wala nang iba. Or this is the girl for me. Wala nang iba. Talagang God has preserved me. I pray that that's gonna be your story. Now, it doesn't mean if hindi na boring yung testimony mo, disqualified ka na. No, God can change that. But again, my prayer, my desire for my kids, sana maging boring yung testimonies nila because I know that's honoring to God. 
who despises a vile person, honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind. What's number three? You honor other people. Right? If you are, if your desire is to please God and your security is in the Lord, if your security is in the Lord, of course your desire is to please Him. You speak what is right. Hindi ka na tataw ko na sabihin yung totoo, yung tama. Right? Kasi kung security mo kay Lord, kung sinabi mo yung totoo, if you say what's right and that person leaves, it's okay. Sometimes yun yung takot natin, if I say what's right, paano pag mawala siya? Eh na kanina ba security mo? Kung mawala siya, kanina ba yung foundation mo? If it's in the Lord, you may get hurt a little, but you're totally secure, right? Because you said what's right. And then your, your response is just to honor other people. Keep honoring them. Don't do anything that dishonors God's creation. Don't do things that dishonor God's creation. What are those things that dishonor God's creation? Sexual immorality. That's so evil against God. I mean, recently, this season in our Christian life, in the Christian world, our community as brothers and sisters in Christ have been really hurt because of Christians, leaders, who failed in this area. Do you know that when you do this, your family, your Christian community also gets hurt? That's why don't do anything that dishonor God's creation. Dishonoring acts, sexual immorality, especially when it comes to, what I'm saying here is when it comes to romantic relationship, we live in a world na hindi nga sila nag, alam mo sinasabi naman lang, we didn't go all the way, but you do certain things that you know is it, dishonoring to God. Avoid those things. It hurts people. If you have done that, again, God is the God of grace, but don't bring it back to that kind of state anymore. Learn from it. Grow away from it and into God's holy presence, His will, His desire for you. Deception. That's dishonoring act. It's, you know, some people, they dishonor others. They deceive. They say lies na ikaw lang ang talagang girl, pero may ibang ikaw lang talaga ang girl. <laughs> And even girls can be like that. That's deception. If not deception, manipulation. Kung love mo talaga ako, you're gonna do this. Kung love mo talaga ako, lilibre mo ako lagi. I mean, whatever that is, okay? Manipulation. That's dishonoring. I'm saying certain things uh, that dishonors God when it comes to romantic relationship. Or drawing someone away from God. If your relationship with that person is drawing you away from God or drawing that person away from God, that's a dishonoring act. You have to let it go. If your security is in the Lord, then you won't do these things. These things are done by insecure people. These things are done by people whose security is in the flesh and not in God. If it's in God, I'm not going to dishonor them. Kaya nga sabi, doing these things, you will not be shaken. If you avoid these things and pursue yung sinasabi ko kanina, you will not be shaken. What's our message? In any romantic relationship, can you read it again with conviction? Can you read it wherever you are? Be secure in the Lord. So number one, my desire is to please God. Number two, I speak what is right. Number three, I honor others. That's what it means when my security is in the Lord. Number four, ito, second part, who keeps an oath. Yan, yung mga nagpa-promise dito. Even when it hurts. Right? Like si Albert, si Kuya Albert yung na-host, nag-promise siya kay Cha. Nag-engage na sila. Okay? So, even when it hurts, dapat i-keep niya yun. And does not change their mind when it comes to romantic relationship and God has led you to pursue this girl or to say yes to this guy in the right time. So let's say, tama na. Ito na talagang tamang timing. Ito na talagang tamang, uh, tamang way, right? You keep an oath when you know that this is from God. But some people, they don't know how to keep an oath. Look at the next part. Who lends money to the poor without interest? who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Well, ano connection niya sa love? Of course, this has many applications, but when you look at it in a romantic relationship, you don't cheat because these are cheaters. They cheat other people. They're not faithful. In other words, number four, you are committed. You are faithful. That's what it means. In any romantic relationship, since it leads and it should lead to marriage, when I make a promise that I know this is right in God's eyes, I need to be committed to that promise and I need to be faithful. Kaya nga, we don't advise that you get into a relationship 
at an early age. Why? You need to think about it. You need to process it. You need to make sure na committed ako. Na even if there are times na feeling ko hindi na siya ganun kaganda, committed ako. Or even if there are times na inis na inis ako sa guy na to, committed ako. Do you see that? That's what it means. When your security is in the Lord, committed ako. There are a lot of people right now, they're not, they don't know commitment. They just know feelings. They just know anything goes. Whatever is the, how the wave is going, how it's, how it's flowing, that's how I'm gonna move. Kung saan nagmove ito, ganito na lang. Kung hindi ko feeling yun, uh, bala na. Okay, baka tomorrow magbago yung feelings. That's not a sign of a committed person. If you're struggling with that, then you need to grow in this area before you enter any relationship. Committed, you need to be faithful. And finally, before look at this person. Look at this. Who despises a vile person keeps an oath. That's what it means. Even when it hurts, does not change their minds. This is what it means when you say, "Now, okay, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm going to be faithful. I'm gonna stay in this right path." What's our message again? In any romantic relationship, be secure in the Lord. Type nyo nga ulit, type nyo para hindi makalimutan. Can you just tag your friends? Be secure in the Lord. Yung mga wala pang boyfriend dyan, walang girlfriend. Yung mga single pa, or even if by relationship ka, be secure in the Lord. You know when your security is in the Lord, hindi ka pang papadalos-dalos eh. And here's the last one. So, let's have a recap before number five. Security in the Lord means... My desire is to please God. It means I speak what is right in God's standards in every situation. It means I honor other people. It means I'm committed and faithful because my security is in the Lord. If God says you keep your promise to this person, I'm going to keep my promise. Committed and faithful. And finally, dedicated. Balik ka pa rin kay God. Yes, desire to please God, pero balik ka pa rin in constant dedication to God. Meaning to say, I'm always dedicated to you, Lord. My life is dedicated to you, secondary lang. Sa aking spouse, sa aking girlfriend, sa aking boyfriend, second lang yan. Primarily, my life is dedicated to you for the rest of eternity. Why? Balik tayo sa verse 1. Because who may dwell in your sacred tent. Look at what the psalmist is saying. The psalmist is saying, I want to be in your sacred tent, Lord. I want to be where you are. I want to be in the center of your will. And that is a sign of a man or a woman dedicated to God. If I'm in the center of your will, if I'm in your holy mountain, definitely my life will be fully secure. I want to be dedicated to you. That's why we need to put our security in God. You see, a dedicated person will not be easily swayed. Mas maganda yung Tagalog. Basahin ko lang Tagalog. Ang taong nakatuon sa Diyos ay di basta-bastang nagpapadala. Mas maganda, di ba? Nakatuon, dedicated. Ang taong nakatuon sa Diyos, di basta-bastang nagpapadala. Ang daming tao ngayon, grabe, ang daling magpadala sa bugso ng damdamin. Kaya kailangan yung dedication. If I'm dedicated, I'm not gonna be easily swayed. I'm not gonna be swayed by my emotions, by my feelings. Why? Because my conviction is strong. I am in solid foundation. Kahit gano'ng kapogi yan, girls. Kahit gano'ng kaganda yan, guys. Basta solid ka kay Lord, hindi ka magpapadala. Seriously. You want to experience that kind of security? Then make sure that you place your security in the Lord. Make sure you desire to please God. Make sure you speak what is right. Make sure you honor other people. Make sure that you're committed and faithful and that your whole life is dedicated to God. What's our message? Be secure in the Lord. We're about to close. So these are the things that I want you to remember, when I say you are secure in God, 
Because we live in a world na hindi talaga, maraming tao, they don't place their security in the Lord. Their desire is not to please God. They are afraid to speak what is right when they know this is what's right. They don't honor others, they just honor their own lusts. They're not committed and faithful and above all, their life is not dedicated to God. This is a formula of disaster because your foundation is not in God. But if you're following this, then I believe your foundation is in the Lord. That's why we need to be secure in God. You know why this is hard as we close? The reason why placing your security in the Lord is hard is because we don't see what God sees and we don't know what He knows. Right? Look at, look at the statement. When our security is in the Lord, okay, so let's say you put your security in God. Let's say you try to do these things, your desires to please Him. Sometimes we feel uncertain. Why uncertain? You don't see what God sees. What you see right now kasi is what you see, for example, this guy or this girl or this relationship. And for me, what I see is what is secure for me. Pero yung sinasabi ni God, hindi ko nakikita, pero sinasabi niya that I trust Him. Ang hirap naman noon, Kuya March. That's why it's quite hard, why we feel uncertain, but the truth is still certain. What's the truth? The truth that He's good, He knows what's best, He is faithful, that He wants to protect us. You knew truth, right? So the truth is still certain even though the situation feels uncertain. It's just like what happened to my newborn son. Okay, you, you know that my wife gave birth recently, right? So last week, she gave birth. After a couple of days, the doctor uh, discharged us. So we're, about, we're, we're going home, right? So it was, it was okay. Everything seems fine. But then the next week, last Monday, we went to the doctor for a checkup. By the way, this is the picture. So we, we went to the doctor for a checkup. And then the notice in the doctor na parang nag yellow siya. Mas nag yellow yung baby. So sabi niya, have a test today. So we did a test just to check yung level, they call it the jaundice, the bilibirin level, that bilibirin level that's causing the, the yellowish color. So there's the checkup, and then they saw that it was quite high. Doctor said, go back the next day. If mataas pa rin, you need to be admitted. So the next day, we were praying, the Lord, please, ayun na namin ma-admit. But surprisingly, it was high. It became higher. So last Tuesday, we got admitted. We had to admit our baby. He needs to go through phototherapy just so that the baby will have you know, a normal levels. So, of course, we, it was inconvenient for us. It was uncertain. We were quite you know, somehow disappointed. Now, Lord, why are you allowing this? Bakit pa kailangan kami bumalik right, the next week? Pwede lang sana nagstay kami doon right, during the first week and stayed longer so that you know, na, they found out that it's high and it could be treated right away. But why the delay? So, we had those questions. It was uncertain. And not just for us, also for the baby. Because phototherapy, it looks like this. So there's that blue light, right? It's not, it doesn't blind you, but it stresses your eyes. So you need to put a cover. Imagine how uncomfortable that is to babies. So every time we put the, that covering on his eyes, he would cry. Why? Because un uncomfortable and he wanted to see things. In fact, every time we remove it for him to rest, talagang his eyes are open. He wants to look at things. And then when we start covering it again, he would cry. It's uncomfortable because you don't see it. You don't see anything. There's uncertainty. And I believe just like us, we don't like it when we don't see it. We don't like it when it's uncertain. We don't like it if we don't know what's going to happen in the future. If that guy is the right guy or that girl is the right girl or what's going to happen to my romantic relationship, it's so uncertain but God is telling us to trust Him. Put our security in Him. You know what we realize, especially with my story? The reason pala, while there was a, there, there, we had to move early, or we, had to, we got discharged earlier, and then we went back to the hospital. The nurse told us that two hours after we got discharged, during that first week when my wife gave birth, after two hours, there was flood in the other room, the room beside us, because there was, they were working on something, and then there was a pop, and then a flow in water, and it went to our room. If we hadn't leave or left that day, it would have entered our room, and it entered the room, and it would have given us so much stress. 
So we didn't see that, but God saw that. So by God's grace, we got discharged in the first week, and then we went back. He protected us from that. And then in this case, why did he have to put that, that cover in on his eyes? Because that was necessary for him to recover. Yes, he doesn't see what's happening, but that was necessary for him. You know what I realized when it comes to our romantic relationship? When there are uncertainties. Uncertainties are necessary so that we constantly place our security in the Lord. Uncertainties are necessary so that we constantly place our security in the Lord. Our tendency kasi is ganito eh. Pag alam mo na, pag naikita mo, pag tendency natin, dun tayo nakahawak. Di ba? Pag alam mo na, dun ka usually nakahawak eh. Sa blessing tayo nakahawak. Sa relationship tayo nakahawak. Ay, alam ko na eh. Alam ko na yung mangyayari. Dun na tayo nakahawak. Pero pag hindi mo alam, hahawak ka sa taong nakakaalam. Di ba? If you're a blind person, you're holding on someone who's not blind because he knows the way. If you're a person who's struggling physically and you need support, you are holding on to someone who's not struggling because that person can bring you to where you want to go or where it's safe for you. It's the same way with our romantic relationship. We don't know. For you singles out there, you don't know. You don't see, but God sees. You don't know why God doesn't want this guy or this girl, but God knows. You don't know why He's allowing the pain to happen, but God knows you. He knows your weakness. He knows your struggles. He cares for you. He desires to protect you. And He wants you to constantly place your security in Him. That's why my challenge to you in any romantic relationship, I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, be secure in the Lord. Can I pray for you guys? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for speaking to us. It's still the love month, Lord. It's a very, very relevant topic to all the young people and even to those not young anymore. But thank you for reminding us that you're the God that gives security. That in you, there is absolute rest, absolute security. But yes, Lord, when we place our security on you, there are doubts sometimes. We feel uncertain because we don't see it. We're blinded. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but you know. We don't know how this is going to all work out, but the truth is it works out every time we depend on you. So I really pray for everyone's listening here and even those who's going to watch this later on. I really pray, Lord, that you open their hearts, that you reveal to them if there is anything they're placing their security on apart from you. If it's money, a person, a relationship, a thing, whatever that is, Lord, if they're holding on it too much and that that is their security, Lord, reveal it to every person so that we will change our foundation and make you the foundation of our hearts. Thank you so much for speaking to us. I pray, Lord, for everyone listening. I pray especially for those whose, whose hearts are not dedicated to you yet. I pray that today will be that day that they will decide to dedicate their entire life following you, holding on to you. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your grace and love and your mercy. We worship you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Praise God for that wonderful.